On October 10, 1863, a Civil War battle took place in Greene County, Tennessee. Between the troops of Federal Major General Ambrose E. Burnside and Confederate Brigadier General John S. Williams, Ambrose was the commander over the Army of the Ohio and Cavalry Corps. Williams was the commander of the 1st Tennessee Volunteer Cavalry and the 4th Kentucky Cavalry and the Home Guard Infantry and Artillery. Come along with us as we discuss the events that would bring these two generals into conflict with each other. All aboard the Kentucky Tennessee Living Time Machine. Please fasten your seat belts and keep your arms and legs inside of the vehicle at all times. But to get going, we need your help. We still need to fire up that time machine to transport us. Please help us by clicking on the like, subscribe, and bell notification buttons down below. Not only does this fire up the time machine, but it convinces YouTube that we need a bigger time machine to reach more people who love history as much as you do. Now, back to our story. Major General Burnside's East Tennessee Campaign Burnside began his invasion of East Tennessee in August of 1863. He began in Kentucky and moved his troops across the state line with little or no opposition. After reaching Knoxville, Tennessee, Burnside contacted Union forces in Chattanooga, and then he and his troops began moving eastward along the East Tennessee and Virginia Railroad. At the time of the battle, Federal Major General Ambrose E. Burnside was the commander of the Department of the Ohio. Ambrose led his men into an expedition into East Tennessee. Burnside ordered General Samuel Perry Carter to clear the roads and passes into Virginia and to secure the salt works that was located beyond Abington, Virginia. Burnside also personally led a cavalry division from General Edward Ferraro Infantry Division to assist Carter in this mission. The Mission of Williams Williams commanded a total of 1,500 men and was occupying the town of Jonesboro, Tennessee. There, he was told to wait until he received orders to move once again. District Commander Major General Samuel Jones ordered Confederate Brigadier General John S. Williams with his troops to set out to disrupt the communications and logistics of the Union. Williams' main goal was to take Bull's Gap, which was located on the East Tennessee and Virginia Railroad. He was given an additional detachment of 200 men to obtain his mission. The Confederate forces knew that Burnside was in the area and that their main mission was to cause as much chaos and disruption as possible to prevent Burnside from taking over the area. Skirmishes On October 3, 1863, Williams met and fought against Federal Brigadier General Samuel P. Carter and his 23rd Corps at Blue Springs, Tennessee. This was located just nine miles from Bull's Gap. Carter withdrew his troops because he was not sure about the strength of the enemy he was facing. Constant skirmishes would ensue between the two factions over the next three days. The Battle About 10 o'clock in the morning on October 10th, Burnside, Carter, and Ferraro approached Blue Springs, Tennessee with all of their troops. Williams had been reinforced by that time. The battle lasted most of that day. Around noon, the Confederate lines had been stretched to the breaking point, with Carter attempting to set up a position to block off any escape route the Confederates might take. Captain Orlando M. Poe, the chief engineer, performed a mission to identify which position would be best for an infantry attack. At 3.30 p.m., Brigadier General Edward Ferraro's 1st Division and the 9th Corps moved in for the attack, which they did at 5 o'clock p.m. The men broke the Confederate line, which caused heavy casualties. They almost made it to the enemy's rear flanks before they were stopped by cannon and musket fire. They were driven back to the Union lines once more. There were three more attacks on the main Confederate line, but each one failed as the Confederate infantry and artillery fire held them back. Seeing that there was a potential for the Confederate troops to be trapped at Blue Springs, Williams waited for the right time to withdraw his troops. When that came, the Confederates withdrew to Blue Springs, but this turned out to be a chaotic retreat, and all of the troops met up again at Jonesboro, Tennessee, before moving into southwestern Virginia. The next morning, the Union began pursuit of Williams' troops. 
Williams retreated back into Virginia, leaving a few Confederate soldiers behind in East Tennessee. Burnside remained in East Tennessee to launch the East Tennessee Campaign to rid East Tennessee of its Confederate influence. The Result of the Battle The battle would end with Federal forces having 100 casualties and losses, with the Confederate forces having 216. This is considered to be a Union victory, with the Confederate forces escaping eventually into Virginia. Thank you. We at Kentucky Tennessee Living would like to thank you for watching our video series on the Appalachian Civil War battles. Don't forget to hit that like button, as the more likes we receive, the more likely YouTube is to suggest our videos to other viewers. Also, to receive notice when we upload a new video, be sure to subscribe and click the bell notification button. We thank you for continuing to support Kentucky Tennessee Living as we are discovering the mysteries in Appalachian history.